Howdy, howdy. This is the HVAC School Podcast, the podcast that helps you answer some of your questions sometimes, I guess, about HVAC. And today we have a question from Stephen about testing dehumidifiers. Hey, Brian. Stephen here with the Comfort Squad in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, had a question about dehumidifiers. I thought this might be a good question for Florida Man or one of your uh, psychrometric friends. Um, so the question is about testing dehumidifiers. Um, obviously putting a psychrometer on the inlet and the outlet, but I don't know, sometimes I'm a little unsure exactly what I'm looking for. I mean, is it is it temperature delta, dew point delta, enthalpy, maybe some, probably some combination of the three, but uh, some guidance here I think would be helpful to all. Thanks. All right, so great question, Stephen. Um, th- there is a lot of different things you can test with dehumidifiers. So first off, first and foremost, dehumidifier, traditional dehumidifier, the one we're talking about here, you run air over an evaporator coil, you drop moisture. So it hits, the air hits dew point, moisture falls out of the air on the evaporator coil, clings to the coil, drains out of the drain, and then it gets reheated by the condenser. So the point is that the air coming out, the air conditions coming out of a dehumidifier are significantly higher sensible temperature than the air going in. But the grains of moisture or the pounds of moisture per cubic foot are going to be lower, right? So you must see that. You must see lower grains, lower pounds, lower dew point coming out of a dehumidifier to prove that it's dehumidifying. That's really the the short answer. So if you want to hang up on this podcast after that answer... Uh, the thing is, it just depends on the software you're using, whether it's going to show you that right off the bat or whether or not you need to look at a, a psychrometric chart and actually plot it. Obviously, the basic of psych- basics of psychrometrics in order to really know the answer. You need to know uh, what your air pressure is. Um, and again, if you're at sea level or close to sea level, then you don't really care because barometric pressure is not going to change it a lot. But if you're at altitude, that can change um, some of the equations, obviously. Uh, you need to know something about the dehumidifier that you're working on. So what is the rating of it? And it's not just what the pints say on it. So if it's a 98 pint, that's un- under a very specific set of entering air conditions. So you need to know what those are and you need to probably have access to charts and information from your manufacturer. That's one of the reasons why we like Santa Fe is they're very good at publishing this information uh, so that you can really tell whether your dehumidifier is performing properly. You may not even care about that. You may just want to know, hey, am I dehumidifying? And again, that's where that looking at your dew point in and dew point out or dew point delta as you called it um, that would be probably your best bet probably the easiest way to uh, look at that is is my dew point now lower coming out than it was going in Uh, which then you can equate that to grains or uh, pounds per cubic foot of air Uh, but again back to what i was saying when you're going to use a psychrometric chart uh, knowing something about generally wet bulb and dry bulb then those you kind of uh, use to figure out the next thing which would be relative humidity Um, And you plot that on the chart, right? And now you can see a bunch of stuff about that air, uh, depending on which line you're looking at on that psychometric chart. If you prefer to to use something like an app, like the Munters app, you can do the same thing in an app, and you don't have to plot it on a psychometric chart. There's a lot of very decent psychometric apps out there that you can use. So those are some things to think about. But again, basics. you got to know about your dehumidifier. Open up the manual on that dehumidifier. Look at the performance charts. Entering air conditions matter a lot if you're going to try to figure out whether or not it's performing properly. You're going to need to know something about power consumption, and that's where using something like a watt meter, like maybe if you know, a lot of these are plug-ins, so using like a kilowatt, or you can use a watt meter. My, my current favorite watt meter on the market, um, because we've tested a lot of them, is the Navigator by Amprobe. Um, they're not a sponsor, but they're just it's a it's a watt meter that I really do like. Fieldpiece also makes a, a watt meter um, that's going to do a good job for most of these things. But you can actually look at that performance. And again, you're going to have to go back to that particular manufacturer. I'm not going to be able to tell you specifically whether or not it's performing how it's supposed to until you actually look at their literature. And that's where looking at a combination, really looking at enthalpy overall, will give you a good idea. But again, remember, the point of a dehumidifier is not to uh, decrease the sensible temperature. You're going to see an increase in sensible temperature. All of that energy, including energy... Um, you know, from compression and everything else is all going to make it out. The heat added by the fan motors, all of that is going straight into the space. A lot of people don't like that about dehumidifiers, but again, 
the gold, in order to dehumidify uh, well, separate from temperature, is actually to add heat. That's actually a handy thing in most cases because now not only does the dehumidifier dehumidify, but it actually adds sensible load to the space, which causes the air conditioner to run more as well, which runtime and low evaporator temperature are what result in good dehumidification. Not that that really answers the question, but that is, those are things to all look at. So, psychrometer in the inlet, psychrometer in the outlet, Again, you can look at you know you can look at dry bulb and wet bulb in, dry bulb and wet bulb out, and do the rest of the the math on a psych chart or in an app if you want, or if you have a application that's going to show you your dew point in, dew point out, um, you can easily change that over to grains or, or pounds. But another thing you can do, and this is maybe a simpler way, is just to measure the amount of condensate that you get out over a period of time. Um, Jenry Garcia talks about this if you want to read more about that this particular technique. He did a tech tip uh, all the way back in 2018 called Dehumidifier Facts and Troubleshooting on HVAC School. So if you just type in dehumidifier in the HVAC School app or HVACRschool.com in the search bar, he really talks about this. Um, there's a lot of people, um, back to uh, Andy Ask, uh, talked a lot about this. Uh, but just as an example, the example he gives here, um, if you have a, a system that's operating at a no nominal capacity of 65 pounds, which is about a 65 pints, a pint, the old, the old phrase, a pint's a pound the world around. Um, whenever you see pints, that's pretty much going to be the same as pounds. Um, so 65 pounds of condensate in 24 hours is equal to about 2.71 pounds per hour. So just collecting condensate in a measuring cup, it should produce about 14 ounces in 20 minutes. The, the problem with that is, is that we have to know that the P-trap was completely full, the pan was already overflowing, so it has to have been producing condensate. Those entering air conditions have to have stayed the same the entire time, and the dehumidifier has to have been running the entire time. So that makes measuring condensate kind of tricky too. It makes it easier if you average it over a long period of time and you know it stayed running and you know the entering air conditions were similar. Because again, the point is, as entering air conditions change, as air dries out in the space or the temperature changes or whatever, uh, it's going to affect how that dehumidifier performs. Another thing that's going to impact dehumidifier performance that you have to consider is static pressure. So you have to look at those charts for that manufacturer. You have to measure your static pressure. And because in a lot of cases, we're ducting dehumidifiers into the supply duct. That's actually a preferred way to do that. And so when that uh, dehumidifier is under higher static pressure, it's just not going to perform as well as when it's under lower static pressure. So that's another thing you have to look at. Um, a lot of people say, well, that's why I ducted into the return. Well, fine, but then you're derating the capacity of the air conditioner, and that's been shown to be a, a, a very bad way of doing it in most cases. So you have to measure static pressure. You have to look at that. You have to, um, if you want to if you want to actually look at, you know, the efficiency energy-wise, you have to look at the wattage. That's where you can use a kilowatt plug-in type of uh, watt meter or a power meter, like I mentioned, um, Navigator from Amprobe. It's a really good one um, that we've tested. When I say we've tested it, it was actually, I, I did test it a while back, but TEC and many others tested it up at their labs um, to see how it performed, and it did a really good job of measuring wattage, um, even at low current levels. And then you're just looking at the total amount of moisture removed. You could measure condensate. You can look at dew point and convert that. Um, and again, a lot of people might point out why well, dew point's not exactly the same as grains. I get it, but it's it's a it's a solid approximation, um, and you can uh, use that again. Now, I, the other thing that people will also mention is you also have to know airflow. Again, going back to the manufacturer's charts, looking at static pressure. Uh, in order to measure airflow is generally going to be the best way. Could you use something like a true flow grid? Maybe if it had a uh, return grill that was a little bit larger and you could put it in the return grill. Um, could you do something like a uh, duct traverse to measure airflow? Sure, that's a way you could do it. But generally speaking, with dehumidifiers, you're just going to need to go back to the manufacturer's literature. And again, that's one of the reasons I really like Santa Fe because they have some of the best literature, some of the most thorough, detailed literature out there so that you could prove that it is actually working. But if you want to do a quick and dirty measurement, hey, just like a dew point going in, dew point going out, the number should be lower going out, right? <laughs> that doesn't tell you a whole lot, but it does tell you something. All right, that was it. I know that was short. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. 
Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.